Hello, our project is a remotely controlled catapult. I'm Christian Bredwell and my group members Brian Simmons and Brandon Walters. So our project objective is to apply the fundamentals of an embedded system to remotely control a catapult, launching and reloading small scale projectiles via web interface. The project will fulfill a need to effectively reduce user intervention such that the user won't have to reload, manually retract, or lock the catapult arm into place, but will only be required to fill the catapult with ammunition when it is empty. Now for our adopted solution, we have a web interface which interfaces with the catapult by sending button states in the form of HTTP GET request objects and then the objects are received by the web server and determines the behavior of the catapult hardware. Now, if the reload button is clicked by the operator, one of the micro servers will release a projectile into the firing chamber and lock the ammunition holder, whereas if the arm button is clicked, a micro server will lock the catapult arm into place and the other will provide tension to the catapult arm. Finally, if the launch button is clicked, the micro servo holding the catapult arm in the launch position will be unlocked, releasing the accumulated kinetic energy contained in the catapult arm and firing the projectile. And after each consecutive button click, the web client will send a push notification specific to the task performed back to the user. And keep in mind that these buttons are executed sequentially, so in the order reload arm launch, now, problems encountered during our project. The major problem we encountered was the addition of a third servo for reloading projectiles. We had spent considerable time diagnosing why the servo wouldn't respond to input from our GUI, as in we would click the reload button and it would send the correct response to the web server, but it wouldn't respond. And initially we thought it was because of a lack of current that was supplied to the servo, but we tried attaching an external battery supply and rewiring um, with a breadboard and that didn't resolve the issue. And we eventually narrowed it down to a software defect and realized we had forgotten to add a brief delay after rotating the servo 45 degrees from its initial position since it is best practice to give a servo time to refresh after rotating it to a set position. And now we're going to give a brief um, video demonstration of our catapult in action. Hello, our project is the remotely controlled catapult. I'm Christian Bedwell and my cameraman, Brandon Walters. So we're gonna briefly go into the various components that interact for this catapult to operate. So if my cameraman can pan towards the device. So what we have here is a five volt external battery pack which provides um, optimal current and voltage to the servos. And then we have an Arduino board and an Ethernet shield which allows it to be controlled remotely over the internet by its global IP address. And then we have uh, various servos which serve different functions such as this one here which um, reloads the um, projectiles into the launch chamber. We have uh, an arm servo which simply locks the catapult arm into place and then a tension servo which as you may see is hooked to a rubber band and that provides tension to the catapult arm. So now that you know the various components of the catapult, we're going to go into how the catapult actually operates from the client interface. So, Brandon, if you will. Okay, so as you can see here, we're connected to Brandon's hotspot, so we are not operating on the same network as the device. And right now, the client interface is in its initial state, so it welcomes the user and informs them that they must click the reload button to get started. So I click the reload button and as you observe on the hardware side, it releases a projectile into the firing chamber. And then I click the arm button, which uh, informs the user that the catapult's been armed and it also warns them that 
the tension servo should not be in this state for too long, otherwise um, the tension servo will draw maximum current um, because it's undergoing its maximum load. And then when I click the launch button, it releases the arm and launches the projectile and informs the user that the catapult has been launched and they may reload another projectile for another iteration of the launching sequence. And uh, the way this uh, device actually works is that button clicks get translated into HTTP GET requests which are sent to the web server and then that specifies actions taken on the hardware end where um, PWM signals rotate each of the selected servos depending on the action taken. For instance, reload would just rotate uh, the reload servo. The arm button would control the arm, ser arm servo and the tension servo. And uh, the launch button would also control these servos, but in a different way. And uh, that's all for the operation of the remotely controlled catapult. Thank you.